Hi, everyone. Welcome to those who are joining. We're just going to give a minute um, as I see the numbers going up in participants. So hang tight and we'll get started in a second. All right, there's still some people joining. Hello, welcome those who have just dialed in. We're just gonna give another moment and then get started. All right, I think I will begin. Hello, Partnering for Vaccine Equity Learning community members, and welcome to this afternoon's learning event. My name is Crystal Ramos, and on behalf of our team at the Urban Institute, I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm very excited that today we'll be hearing about the Vaccine Resource Hub, which is a key component of the Partnering for Vaccine Equity Learning community. The Resource Hub is being managed by our learning community collaborators at the CDC Foundation, and they partner with Insomniac Design to develop the Hub's website. Our featured speakers today are from CDC Foundation and Insomniac Design, and they're going to walk us through what the Resource Hub is and how it can support the work you're doing to advance vaccine equity. Before we go further, I'll do our typical quick review of how this session will work. So you've all been muted upon entry to the session. There's a lot of us, so, stay, so staying on mute unless you are speaking is key to keeping the discussion going without accidental interruptions. You do have the opportunity to speak your questions rather than type into the Q&A, it's your choice. If you wanna speak your question, please use the raise hand feature and we'll unmute you. If you wanna type your question, use the Q&A tab to do this. And you can ask a question at any point during the session. The chat room feature is also open today and we encourage you to chat amongst yourself as you'd like, but please use chat, good chat room etiquette. By this, I mean don't post questions for the speaker in the chat because we might not see them there. And also, though this probably goes without saying, please be civil to one another and, you, and to our speakers while chatting. Finally, as with all of our learning events, we will post the slides and a recording of the event on our community website and through the digests that go out to the CDC Managed Adult Vax Program Listserv, which all program members should be a part of. If you have any technical difficulties at any point during the session, you can send an email to our community manager's inbox, vaxequitylearning at urban.org. We'll be watching the inbox and try to help you as quickly as we can. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our featured speakers. Megan Fields is a federal, federal program manager in the Infectious Disease Department at the CDC Foundation. She has over 10 years of domestic and international experience managing and growing innovative public health programs. Megan manages multiple projects and partnerships that use health communications and social media to address COVID-19 and influenza vaccine hesitancy by identifying and countering misinformation, working with trusted messengers to deliver factual content, and providing resources to build capacity across partner organizations. As a CDC Foundation lead for the Partnering for Vaccine Equity Learning Community Collaboration, she oversees the content management and website development of the Vaccine Resource Hub. Also, we have today Bill Ritson, who is an account director at Insomniac Design in Washington, DC, a Washington, DC-based digital design agency. In partnership with clients around the globe, Insomniac's team of strategists, designers, and developers create innovative products, experiences, and technical solutions that make a lasting impact on brands, people, and communities. Thank you, Megan and Bill, for taking the time to introduce us to the Vaccine Resource Hub this afternoon. Megan, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you so much, Crystal. I'm so excited to be at this point in our project where we're able to share the Vaccine Resource Hub with all of you and go through the steps of how this is really a tool for you as um, learning community members and how you're going to be able to use it um, for both your projects and to share resources across learning community partners. Next slide, please. So our agenda today is we're going to introduce the Vaccine Resource Hub. We will do a product walkthrough and upload demonstration. We will do a search and download demonstration. Um, we're going to share with you some contact information, the Learning Community Hub account integration, and a timeline for access and use, next steps, what to expect, and then we'll leave some space for frequently asked questions. And if we have time, we will address the questions that you put into the Q&A on the webinar today. Next slide. 
Okay, so introducing the Vaccine Resource Hub. Um, why was this created? It really was created to increase access to trusted, vetted, community-specific resources and education about COVID-19 and influenza, um, vaccines for minority and BIPOC communities, and the organizations that they serve. So really, this was created for you, for your organizations, um, to be able to, to have access to these assets. The intended uses for the learning community are really to explore and discover these resources and media that are uploaded to the Vaccine Resource Hub um, and to contribute resources. This is a key and critical part of being a learning community member is that you will have the opportunity to contribute the resources and materials that you're creating and share it across the broader community. Um, currently, the website is what we refer to as a minimum viable product. And so that means this is a very phase one um, basic version of the website. So it's ready to use, but it's going to continue to grow as we learn more from the community, what your needs are, and we have more access to the content that you're creating. So your feedback is really encouraged. This is a tool for you to use, and we want to hear how it's working and how we can improve. Um, the more content will be added over the coming months, um, and there are hundreds of resources available now to browse and download. Next slide, please. So the two core functions of the Vaccine Resource Hub really are to upload resources and to browse and download resources. So uploading resources, members of the learning community are going to be able to contribute these resources um, that you've created for your own organizations, for your own social media channels, your own webinars um, that are reaching your communities and clients and be able to share those to other organizations that are serving the same priority populations. There's also the feature to browse and download resources. So you're gonna be able to search and discover this curated content um, that other learning community members and maybe eventually the general public will be able to explore and access um, for viewing and downloading. Next slide. And here are just a few examples of assets and resources that are currently on the Vaccine Resource Hub. So you can see this first one is an educational fact sheet. It's something that was developed by the CDC um, and this has been shared on there so that it's sort of this one-stop shop um, of all of the different partners across the Partnering for Vaccine Equity program. There's, here's an example of a brochure, and then we also have social media graphics um, that you can download and share on your own social media pages if you um, need more content to use. But we have flyers, there's graphics, we're gonna be having webinars um, posted on there and other social media content that you should be able to use. Um, but really what I wanna do is I wanted to save a lot of the space and time um, to understand how you as the user can go through the step-by-steps of using the resource hub. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Bill, our account director from Insomniac Design, and he's gonna walk us through the process um, from a user perspective. Thanks, Megan. Um, first, we are going to walk through the, uh, the process for uh, logging in, uploading, and submitting resources. So as we said before, this is a minimum viable product. It's going to change. So the experience will slightly change. What we're going to do to keep everybody posted is provide ongoing information about how to use it. We're going to have a user guide that's going to be frequently updated so that there should be no questions about how to use this. Our goal is to keep this as simple as possible. So as uh, we mentioned, the learning community members will be able to sign into this site using the same credential that they're using for the Urban Institute uh, Equity Learning Community Portal. So after logging in, they'll see a link to, the na to navigate to the page that will allow you to upload resources for review and publication. So next slide. What you see here is just the homepage. Um, so from here, um, go to the next slide. There's going to be this third party login screen. So this is a third party identity provider, which is a secure site that will allow us to connect the credential that's used for the vaccine equity site to the learning community or to the vaccine resources, uh, vaccine resource hub, so that we can use the same credential, uh, same email login and same password. So uh, users will need to input their password here and then select login and we'll go to the next page, uh, next slide please. And this is the login, uh, the logged in version of the homepage. So what you see here is a to the top right corner and upload a resource link. And so that's really the key functionality to go into this upload process. So as soon as you click that, go to the next slide. Thanks. 
uh, you'll see the core uh, resource uploading login page. So uh, what we have here are a number of fields that will guide the users, uh, the learning community members through the process of uploading these resources. So the first thing that we're asking for is a title for the resource. Uh, the learning community and the uh, CDC Foundation has a content management partner that's going to be working through this process and making sure that everything is correctly titled, information is accurate, et cetera, to make sure that um, it's a positive user experience for learning community members as well as the general public. So we're going to ask uh, providers to put in the uh, title of the resource as well as a date for when it's uploaded. And the reason why we have this date for the upload is to uh, track how long it's been on the resource hub flag if it ever needs to be reviewed or updated. And so we can kind of keep a, a basic track record of the uh, age of the, the resources that are on the hub. We then have an optional image. So in case you would like to submit a thumbnail uh, of what that resource looks like um, for the resource detail page view, which we'll show you in a moment, um, users are gonna be able to upload the, uh, just a basic image, a uh, small image of what that will uh, look like to give a bit of a preview. And then we have a description box. So this is a long form content area where uh, submitters can put information about the resource that they're submitting or they're electing to upload um, with anything about why it needs to, or why it should be added, who it's intended for, et cetera. So we have all this information here. Next slide, please. Uh, next, we're gonna uh, have a space for users to submit the actual file of the resource that they're looking for. So um, it's a very simple kind of like, uh, like Google Drive or Dropbox, just a simple, uh, uh, dialog box that opens and allows you to select a file from your, your computer, your device to upload. And then we have as well a video link. And what this allows is for uh, if you have a video resource that you publish to YouTube or Vimeo or another uh, streaming site, um, you can post a link here. And that way we can have, instead of a large file upload, we can feature the video directly on the page itself for viewing. So this is another uh, area where we can uh, make sure that videos are, are easily hosted. Next, we have a few uh, options and dialog fields for different uh, information or different data that we wanna store and uh, house about the resources. So the first is the resource type. So as Megan said before, we have a number of different resource types such as brochures, fact sheets, videos, toolkits, et cetera. So this is a dropdown that allows you to select what resource type the resource you're uploading most closely fits. Below that is the region. So um, this is in relation to a specific geography in the US, such as the Midwest, the Northeast, or the Southwest. Uh, you can select a region if there's any pertinence to the resource you're uploading. And then we have a topic field here. So what you can do with this drop down is select items such as Delta variant, antibodies, masks, or testing to make sure that people that are searching for those specific resources and filtering when they're looking and browsing uh, can easily find that. We've also created a number of keywords that can be assigned to resources as tags so that users that are searching for specific topics or keywords can quickly find them. For example, uh, if you have a resource that's about vaccine side effects, uh, a user could search side effects and the tag will appear uh, so that they can then select and it'll automatically filter to this as a matching resource. So once you've completed all these items, uh, these are all gonna be optional inputs. Um, you can submit save. Uh, what that does is uploads the data as well as the resource for our content managers to then review. Um, they'll take a look at all of the resources that have been uploaded as well as all of these uh, different data items just to make sure there's accuracy um, as well as its compliance against a criteria that the CDC Foundation is working on uh, to make sure that everything is um, you know, accurate and relevant and trusted information. Next slide. So uh, that's the upload process. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. If there's any questions, we're happy to field them, uh, but we can walk through first the browsing and downloading resources section. So um, there's two main ways that we currently have in the functionality for searching and discovering resources. This is gonna be for community members as well as for the general public because users do not have to have a login to uh, search and download these files. So the first is gonna be a keyword-based search, which we'll show you. And then we can show you those drop downs on the front end for the user, uh, what that looks like so that um, you can understand this core functionality and how those tags and those inputs uh, kind of feed this search experience. Next slide. So here's the homepage again. Um, what you see is uh, some core links at the top. So there's about the resource hub. Uh, that's just a general page explaining the functionality of the website, the goals, um, who's been involved in the process thus far as well as a link for additional resources. Um, that page will allow users to see additional resources that the CDC Foundation has said are trusted, reliable external resources for different types of other resource hubs, other information centers, 
um, and, and a bunch of different kind of knowledge areas for uh, additional information. So if we uh, go to the next slide. If you scroll down on the homepage, um, we've put the functionality for the search and filtering uh, right on the homepage, since that's really the core functionality and the most important part of this site. So in that top right corner is that keyword search section that I mentioned. So a user can type in something like side effects or masks and search directly through, uh, through that functionality there. Uh, but we also have beneath here um, a number of filter dimensions or filter drop downs uh, based on and kind of similar to what we had on the back end uh, for people to search and find information relevant to their resource uh, type, the region, uh, the topic by which they're looking for information, as well as the language uh, that most closely matches the audiences that they're trying to reach. Next slide. So if you go to each drop down, you can see we have nationwide resources that are really kind of for everybody across uh, the general geography, as well as a couple of different community types and uh, some regions specifically to the US. Next slide. Resource type, you can drop down and select not just one, but as many of these as you'd like. And what it'll do is find any of those resources that have any of those tags. So if you want both audio as well as brochures, as well as flyers and graphics, you can select all of them. And what it'll do is uh, just pull through items that have any of those tags associated with it. Next slide. The same with topics. Um, we have specific core subjects and topics uh, related to, uh, to the Vaccine Resource Hub, as well as the Partnership for Vaccine Equity. We've also put in a couple different uh, core community communities in there, such as Hispanic Latinx, um, in order to make sure that there's resources easily uh, findable and browsable uh, if we're looking for a specific, uh, specific community. Next, we also have uh, Items searchable by language. So when items are uploaded, we'll determine how, uh, what language they're they're presented in, and then um, users can search for them uh, based on a specific language, or if they're looking for combinations of languages or bilingual. Um, this will all be searchable as well. Next slide. So once you search, uh, you can apply your filters, and what you find here is your results page. So um, you can see below, based on those little purple tags, um, in this search we looked for brochures related to COVID nineteen. Once you click apply filters, you can find uh, that there were three items that were returned that had this, these, uh, this tag in combination to them. So um, you're able to then look at these in more detail and determine which is the most uh, sensible uh, resource for you. So if you click on more details, um, go to the next slide, we'll show you that detail page. This is what the detail page is. So each of these resources has its own page dedicated to the information about it to really make sure that it's what you're looking for and that it has all, those, uh, all the information you need for it to be a usable resource. So um, you can click on that uh, thumbnail and look at that in a bit more detail. Um, there's some information about there. It shows you resource type, region, uh, topics related, as well as the language it's presented in. So if the user were to select download, um, what that does is automatically download that resource to your device, ready for use, uh, ready for distribution, however you want to use it or view it. So uh, it should be a very easy process to uh, fully understand and um, you know, get started looking at these resources. Next slide. Okay, thank you so much, Bill. I really appreciate you walking through that. And that was a ton of information. And um, fortunately, we are recording this session, so we can go back and watch it. Um, but in addition, we will be providing just some step-by-step -step slides um, that we can share with the group afterwards as well to make sure that you are able to go back and sort of look through how you can interact with the resource hub. Um, I did see some questions come in the Q&A, and I will get to those um, at the end because I didn't have time to type in my responses. So um, support and contact information. The CDC Foundation and Insomniac Design are collaborating with Mathematica um, to ensure the site's easy to use so that all the resources are available and um, reliable, reviewed, and approved. So we want to be really transparent about the process that we are using to evaluate and vet the content that is being uploaded. It is critical to the integrity of every piece of information that we have on there that we go through this, this evaluation process. So this evaluation process was created by um, evaluation and public health subject matter experts and is being implemented and built upon by Mathematica, our content manager. And the reason that it's important is because we all know there's so much misinformation out there, disinformation out there, and we want the users, the learning community members, to be able to feel like they're going to the site and every piece of information on there is up to date 
and has been vetted in a very um, systematic way. Um, so after you submit a resource on the website, it's going to go into this sort of pending state. And our content manager, Mathematica, is going to review it and they're going to vet it against a set of guidelines that we've created. And they're either going to approve it and publish it to the Vaccine Resource Hub, or they're going to provide feedback as to why the particular item wasn't selected and what needs to be changed in order for it to be uploaded. And so right now that's going to be our process and we encourage you to email us at this email address if you have any questions or issues during your upload process. Next slide. So integrating with the Learning Community Hub. So the Learning Community members are going to be able to access the Vaccine Resource Hub site using the same username and password that you're currently using to access the Learning Community platform. Um, and then each site will have the unique login, but your credential is going to remain the same. So what does this mean? What it means is right now, when you go to the Learning Community platform, you log in um, and then it brings you back to the Learning Community page at, as a logged in member. And so we want that functionality to be the same. And so what it's going to do is you're going to do the same thing and then you're going to be able to access the Learning Community platform. And then when you're on the Resource Hub, you're going to be able to log in the same way using your same username and your same password. Um, so we wanted this to be sort of like a seamless process. You didn't have to remember multiple passwords um, for the, the sister sites, if you will. Um, but one of the things that I do want to emphasize is that this process is going to be implemented later this week. And so right now, if you were to go to the Vaccine Resource Hub, you're not going to see the login feature right now. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to be sending out an email. Um, and we can actually go to the next slide because I think this is actually covered on the next slide. Right, so yeah, the Vaccine Resource Hub is um, it's live and ready for searching, browsing, and downloading. And then later on this week, you're going to be able to log in and submit resources. And so let's go ahead and uh, go to the next slide as well. Okay, so what's going to happen and the next steps are going to be that you're going to receive an email from vaccineequity.urban.org, the same um, email address that you received your first login for the Learning Community Platform from. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to um, reset your password, right? So this is a little bit of going to be a change to your process. You're going to reset your password. And then using that new password, that is how you're going to access both of the sites going forward. Okay, so let's go to the next step or the next uh, slide. <laughs> All right, so some of the frequently asked questions. Um, how will I know if the resource I uploaded is approved to be published? So you're going to want to keep an eye out for the resource after you submit it and someone from the Vaccine Resource Hub is going to um, be in touch with you via email if there are any issues. Um, another common question that we've heard is when will we see more updates to the site? So the CDC Foundation and Insomniac teams are working to add even more functionality and useful features later this year and in 2022, so stay tuned. But I'm thinking December is really going to be sort of like the next timeline that you're going to see some big changes to the resource hub after we um, do this, this single sign on feature. And then um, I found I found something on the vaccine resource hub that looks inaccurate or outdated. What should you do? Um, we really want, again, to encourage you to be interactive with this website. If you see anything that you have questions or concerns about, feel free to reach out to us at this email, um, info at vaccineresourcehub.org. This, this email is also going to be on the website itself um, and let us know so that we can review it. So I'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so I want to sort of pause here, take a moment um, to look at some of the questions that have come in to the Q&A and I'm just going to field these and Bill, I'll pass any over to you that I don't feel like I can answer. Um, but the first question is, can you choose more than one region such as Northeast and urban? The answer is yes, you can. How will the general public know this resource hub exists? That's a great question. Um, so right now, our primary focus and our primary priority population is you, the learning community members. Um, and so it was important for us to have the, the Vaccine Resource Hub um, presented to this community 
and explained to this community and accessible to this community before we really are opening it up to the public. However, anyone at any point can go to vaccineresourcehub.org and access the website in the way that they can search and download and browse features. So right now it is open to the public and anyone is allowed to share it with partners outside of the learning community. But this is really our first step in introducing the resource hub. And we wanted to make sure that that first step was with our partners in the learning community. Um, will, next question, will we get feedback from Mathematica if a piece of material is not approved? Yes, you will get feedback of why the, um, of, of if the material wasn't approved. And we're going to work um, as part of uh, capacity building and sort of learning opportunity with members who are uploading to help create content that is a, that is usable and accessible on the site. So we don't want it to be like a no, sorry, like this didn't work. We really want it to be like if you could just you know make a couple modifications, then please resubmit it, and we'll be happy to post it on the site. The next question, could we please ask that resources in a non-English language be supplemented with an explanation in English of what the document says so those not fluent in the language can know what it says? This is a great, um, this is a great comment and a great point. And this is something that I will note moving like towards our content manager, Mathematica. So one of the things that they're going to be doing is, as Bill showed you in that upload page, you know, you're going to put in a title, you're going to upload the document. You're going to put in a um, you're going to put in um, like a description for the the materials, and then the content manager is going to sort of approve that, if you will. And so that could be a good time for them to maybe also create um, in the English language a summary of what that says. So thank you for that page. Um, next question: As part of the approval guidelines. Will all resources be checked for accessibility to people with disabilities? For example, use of alternate text, accessible documents, et cetera. Yes, we um, are working to make all of the documents as well as, of course, the website itself as accessible as possible. And we are um, have worked with one of the learning community partners, um, ABLE South Carolina, um, we were able to interview them and to get some really good feedback from them on how we can enhance our site and the content to make it more accessible. But again, this is an interactive website. We want this to be a tool that works for you. So I really would encourage if you see something that can be improved that you send an email to us at info at vaccineresourcehub.org so that we can make sure that we're making the changes and making it the most accessible site that we can. Um, another question, are there any copyright or licensing agreements for upload, uploaded content? Um, yes, so there are a couple things. Um, we do have our terms and conditions um, and our legal documents on the website. And those sort of walk through some of the details of the website and, and how, you know, the legality of it. So you, if you're uploading something, then you are taking ownership of that content and you are approving that it's available to be used by other people and vice versa. So if you're, you know, if you're downloading content, you're, you're responsible for how you're using it. Um, and so we would hope that you would be using it responsibly and not for anything ill-intentioned. Um, we are not encouraging users to upload things like photographs that would need a you know uh, some sort of release associated with it because it just becomes too difficult legally to move forward with stuff like that um, and we also are working towards developing content and making content available on the resource hub that is unbranded so that you can you know so that there's no uh, copywriting issue but ebony if i can explain that further or if i did or didn't answer your question and you can let me know i would appreciate it um, Autumn has asked, can subrecipients also access this hub? We are managing 35 projects across this country. Is this something we could send to them to access as local needs arise? Well, absolutely, they can use it for searching and for downloading. And if they have access to the learning community platform, which I believe they may, then they would also then have access to the resource hub using that same login. Um, when I tried to access the site, um, I was blocked on my CDC computer. I used ITSO and they are going to give me access. Okay, so this is actually something that Bill and I have been working on. Um, 
Um, Hazella, our program officer from the CDC for this project, has submitted an IT request ticket. We're waiting to sort of hear back. But what it sounds like is that the CDC has to give uh, vaccineresourcehub.org the green light that we're a safe site. Um, and then once they do that, it should be okay. But we are waiting on the CDC's IT team to get back to us. And so I do apologize that if you are a CDC employee that you are unable to access it at this time, but we are doing our best and, and thank you for bringing it to our attention. Um, will Urban Institute staff be willing or available to do future trainings on the hub and resources? Um, probably not the Urban Institute, but they will host it the way that they have hosted this um, particular training, but uh, CDC Foundation, Insomniac Design, and our newest partner, Mathematica, will have scheduled trainings throughout the rest of year one um, so that we can share the updated features and how to use them and continue to answer any questions. Can you batch up upload multiple resources at once? Right now, I believe you can upload five resources at a time, but they're going to be associated with the same title and the same description. That functionality will be enhanced and improved in the coming months where you can have a little bit more flexibility in sort of doing a batch upload. But right now, um, we encourage you to only upload multiple items um, at once if they're related to one another. Is that correct, Bill? Am I representing that functionality accurately? Yes, that's correct. We'll have we'll have future functionality for establishing collections, series, um, and making sure that data is all well managed. So um, yeah, you can upload multiple at once um, as one piece of content right now. Great. Um, and then there's another question that come that has come in about um, not having an Urban Institute Learning Community login, and can you get access to that? So um, the Learning Community Platform and the Vaccine Resource Hub are sister sites, and um, the Learning Community Platform is a closed member website, and it is only available to um, partners who are learning community member um, in, in this Partnering for Vaccine Equity program. And if you are part of that Vaccine Equity program and you don't have an Urban Institute Learning Community login, then you should absolutely get one. And I would speak with your prime um, your prime funder. So I'm not sure um, if you are working in that space. If you are not working in that space, then you cannot get access to the Urban Institute community um, platform, but you can still use the resource hub to search and download content. And should you have um, content that you want to submit, you're welcome to submit it to info at vaccineresourcehub.org. Um, and it would go through a similar process. It would have to be um, vetted and sort of evaluated by our content manager and then eventually uploaded to the site. It would be a longer process. Um, it might take a little bit longer because it's not the streamlined version. However, we don't want this to be um, an exclusive site. And we know that there are a lot of organizations that have really amazing content that should be shared that aren't necessarily part of this program. And so please um, reach out to us at info at vaccineresourcehub.org. If you think that you fall into the category of you're not partnering for vaccine equity, but you have content that you want to share. Um, and OK. Perfect. I think I might have gotten through all of them. Does anyone else have any additional questions at this time? Um, it looks like maybe somebody had raised their hand. Is that person still on? Uh, let me go through this, scroll through and see if I can see who you are. Michelle Newman. Maybe it was an accident. Um, okay. Well, I appreciate your time today. Um, I am going to go ahead and pass it back over to Alicia from the Urban Institute to wrap up our presentation today. Yes, thank you again to Megan and Bill for taking out the time to share with us um, the Vaccine Resource Hub. So we have a good amount of time left, but I'm going to ask Zara to launch our um, satisfaction poll. Um, so if you wouldn't mind before you log, get, log out to please fill that out. Um, also, just wanted to remind folks that materials from this event will be available to our members in the Learning Community website. Um, but other than that, thank you all for being here and please stay tuned for, you know, more learning events in the future.
Have a good week. Yeah.